right, let's get into this. What's up, guys? I'm going to do a, a video like this because there's a lot of information to go over. And I'd rather just talk live instead of doing a bunch of editing. I like editing. It's fun. But I, it'll take me too long. I have to be sparing with my time until I'm able to f afford the spare time. So this image you might recognize. It's the first image of a black hole. Now, to no surprise, it looks like this because that's what we've understood it is going to look like anyways when we look at it through a radio, the radio spectrum, a radio wave spectrum. Now, if we were to look at it with a bare naked eye, it would simply look like a very, like a sun, a very bright sun. Um, it would have, it has so much matter and plasma around it, but what we're able to see through the noise with radio frequencies of a certain wavelength now i'm not gonna get this is i'm just gonna pose some questions that's that's what i like to do i am by no means a professional like i have no doctorate i have no pedigree in actual physics itself except what is i've learned myself i'm self-taught right from the internet and weaning and weaning through tons of different articles of some that's bs some that's um, conjecture some that's just theoretical it has theoretical probabilities that are very that are you know are very obvious and 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 then also physics that have empirical evidence such as Newton and stuff like that I mean things that are, are and, and Maxwell and you know things of that Faraday things of that nature so what I will get into though is some overlooked things I like putting together pieces. I like seeing a bigger picture and seeing if there's something missing. And I see something that's missing that's not being talked about. So I'm just going to put it out there and you be the judge and let me know in the comments what you think. Um, it has to do with the concept of two things. One is dark matter, dark energy, like, you know, the counterparts of each other. Um, and the other is gravity itself. Now, I'm not going to get into my ideas of what gravity is, or I'm not going to pose too many questions about that. I'm just going to say this. Have we found the gravity particle yet, or what gives rise to gravity yet? We have not. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind moving forward. Uh, and also, have we found the substance of a black hole, or a black hole, a dark matter, or dark energy? We have not. All we have done is created more particles, more subatomic particles from smashing particles together, subatomic particles together. So in a sense, we're creating particles. And that goes into like a relativistic perception of things, um, which I also am not going to get into because uh, those are all very theoretical th thought experiments and stuff like that. I like to look at empirical evidence and, and ask nature the questions. I don't like to just ponder things in my mind all the time because then you you're making up new dimensions i guess is a way to look at it so if you know about condensed matter physics there's superfluids of hydrogen and helium we talk about helium a lot but for whatever reason i don't know why this is really confusing to me trying to understand why this is so buried but it is it's buried in scholarly papers i don't I, it's, it's kind of frustrating to be completely honest. And I've asked into scientific communities about it and I get very little response. Nobody wants to touch it for some reason. And I don't know, I don't know why, but superfluid hydrogen, we're talking about hydrogen at very, very, very cold temperatures, okay? Close to absolute zero. And it does become superfluid and it is not only a superfluid, it's what is called metallic hydrogen. It becomes um, extremely conductive it's supposedly the, the the least dense of all solids. I've never seen it though, so I don't know. I've only seen, I, I, you know, I've seen liquid liquid hydrogen, but it but then it takes an organizational pattern. And if it's anything like helium, helium we have not made solid. It goes into a superfluidic state. You can't make it solid. Hydrogen, okay, all theory aside. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm asking you. They, they say that there is a, a sol solid hydrogen, solid metal hydrogen is what it's called. And it's part of my experimentation. Um, but I don't have the experiment. I don't have the capabilities to ex make extremely low temperatures. Uh, 
that being said, supposedly it's been done, and actually, the first doer, the first the guy who made doer flasks, supposedly made solid hydrogen and uh, and has papers on it and stuff like that. But solid being in what a liquid form, like that's what I'm confused about. I I can't find any information on it. I can't find enough information on it. Um, so if you have some information to link me, please let me know. But how this relates to black holes, you might ask. Some of you might be putting it together. I, I ask you this. What's the most abundant element in the universe? Okay, it's hydrogen. What is the most conductive form of matter? Is like a superconductor, right? It has it, it can manipulate uh, magnetic fields and all that, all that type of thing. Now, what happens to light if it's in a material lattice and is affected by a magnetic field? It can be bent. Okay, that's. That's what a mirror is. That's what, um, that's what, uh, if you look at the ferro cells, you've ever seen a ferro cell, it's, you know, there's, there's ferro, ferro fluid in it. So there's magnetic charged particles, um, any, and plasma itself. Plasma is light bending. I mean, it's wonderful. Those are wonderful examples, right? So hydrogen, number one, God particle, what used to, or well, I shouldn't say God particle, but that's, you know, the Prometheus, the Proteus atom. Um, so it's, you know, elemental number one. It's kind of an important element on our periodic table. And everything in, in a star can it basically be contributed to hydrogen as far as we know. So superconducting fluid. So this is one of the best articles I've been able to find. Um, and superconducting to uh, superfluid phase transition in liquid metal hydrogen. Okay, so liquid metal hydrogen. So this is this is my understanding. Just like helium, which makes sense to me, that cannot be frozen. Um, it's just too. It's too. I don't know if it's too dense. I <clears throat> my feeling of it. I'll leave it up to you. But my feeling about it is that its density is is it can be condensed so it's incompressible that's probably the best way to describe it okay so because of that it, it cannot take a completely solid structure form in you know without some extreme pressure though this is all that's all theory that's all not there's no proof to that um i'm just putting my own ideas of, of thought behind it but disregard them because i'm not supposed to be doing that so, <laughs> although hydrogen is the simplest of atoms it does not form the simplest of solids or liquids quantum effects in these phases are considerable a consequence of light proton mass so because their protons are so light they they cannot organize very very easily this is what kind of what i was saying it's incompressible so and they have a de demonstrable and often puzzling influence on the physical properties, including spatial order. To date, the structure of dense hydrogen remains ex experimentally elusive. Okay, recent studies have the melting curve of hydrogen indicate that at high but experimentally accessible pressures, compressed hydrogen will adopt a liquid state, even at low temperatures. In reaching this phase, hydrogen is also projected to pass through an insulator to metal transition. So right now, water and hydrogen itself is, if it's pure, is an insulator, right? Um, but then if it goes through these strange uh, alignments, you could say they're crystalline alignments, like a metal, right? Um, it, become, it becomes a, su a superconductor, according to the abstract of this paper. So um, liquid metal, okay, so where was I? The, this raises the possibility of a new state of matter, all right? So this is super important. This is why condensed matter physics is something that I don't know why it's being mis overlooked along with the electrical dynamics, but honestly, like if you want to understand the principles of science, nature has offered all its, you know, it's offered tons of information for us, but if you're only looking at one narrow scope or one narrow avenue, or you're trying to uphold something that was an idea of somebody from the past, uh, you're not advancing. So that's perhaps where f fiduciary things come in, come into play. Fiduciary funding and um, being able to continue with what you love to do might 
subconsciously trump true empirical science. That's I'll leave I'll leave that there. Might perhaps just something to think about. Okay, so so recent studies will say where was I quant the state of metal and order states of quantum domain. Let's see. This raises the possibility of of a new state of matter, a near ground state, liquid metal. Okay, ground state, and it's ordered states in the quantum domain. Okay. Ordered quantum fluids are traditionally categorized as superconductors or superfluids. These respective systems feature dis dissipationless electrical current or mass flow. Here we report a topological analysis of the projected phase of liquid metallic hydrogen, finding that it may represent a new type of ordered quantum fluid. Specifically, we show that liquid metallic hydrogen can be categorized exclusively as a superconductor or superfluid. We predict that in the presence of a magnetic field, liquid metallic hydrogen will exhibit several phase transitions to ordered states, ranging from superconductors to superfluids. So, and that's pretty much where it runs out. So in order for me to access more, I have to spend money, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, looking at some of these though, you have the um, Penrose, Osager, Bose, Einstein, Einstein condensation liquid. I mean, there's a lot of relative articles about critical, critical mass of super fluids, super conductivity, um, you know, Coulomb pairing, dielectric realm, uh, lots of different, um, lots of different quantum physical properties, um, trying to bridge the gap. And so this is what I'm saying. I, I find it very disheartening that it's not, this is not talked about very much. You know, we like to look at the surface level of things, but looking at the bigger picture of how nature organizes itself, I think that hydrogen superfluid hydrogen and stuff should, probably should be talked about a little more condensed matter physics okay and and the electrical the electrical possibilities that that would have if you have a superconductive material right in 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 a space that that potentially is showing that it's a new state of matter okay um and thinking about a liquid what a liquid would do what a liquid does in space how a sphere's capacity if affects um or how a sphere itself has maximum amount of capacity and also what a magnetic field does to light in in materials okay so those are things to ponder so solid hydrogen solid hydrogen state of of the element achieved by decreasing the temperature below hydrogen's melting point of 14.01 kelvin okay it was collected for the first time james dewar the inventor of the dewar tube right in in 1899 and published um in, uh, published in the Sur la solidification de la hy hy hydrogen. It's a terrible, terrible French, but uh, that's my attempt. So sorry for for you French speakers out there. It's a beautiful language. It really is. I probably just slaughtered it. So solid hydrogen has a density, right, of point. 086 grams per centimeter squared, uh, making it one of the lowest density solids, lowest density solids, right? So being extremely low density is somewhat is like air or like gas. But if this, but if even its density being so low, it would make it more cushion it would make it harder to compress if that makes sense like you wouldn't be able to force this density to be any lower type of thing like you can't go below hydrogen that's why helium is liquid and has no solid phases and actually i should look that up is there a solid phase to helium because as far as i remember i don't remember ever seeing a solid phase of helium often hard to distinguish solid from liquid helium since the refractive index of the two phases are nearly the same. So helium three is the solid phase and it is still a liquid. It's called superfluid. So there, uh, I'll leave that there for you guys to think about. Now, bending light with a magnet. Bending light with a magnet. Uh, if you have a laser beam moving through air, moving through a vacuum and you put a magnet up to it, eh, it's not, the effect, you won't be able to see the effects and according to you, you know most researchers and stuff it, it's not possible however if you have charged particles in 
that light, right? Affecting that light, the light is going to refract and reflect off those char those particles depending on the polarity. That's quantum physics 101 practically, right? So, um, so I mean, it doesn't interact with it directly, but if it if you have a uh, a medium, right, a, a space, right, the light will move relative to this to the space. And so that's, um, you know, I'll leave that there as another thing to think about. Finally, the most important piece of this, I think, um, the, the, the cherry, the black cherry on top is how cold are black holes? So it has been found that black holes, let's see. Basically, they're the coldest. They're the coldest pl things in space. Okay, so a solar mass black hole might have a temperature of only 0. 0.0000. How many zeros is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight to the negative tenth, I believe, is what that would be, a Kelvin. So, uh, yeah, that's that's really freaking cold. And um, if you remember in this last slide, for um, the temperature of superfluidic hydrogen um or maybe it was under here solid yeah this is it uh melting point four so below 14.01 right so quite uh quite a huge jump so could could there be presence of hydrogen superfluid for the black hole something to think about condensed matter physics. We know that a black hole is a condensed body of matter. How it would separate from other matters though, right? The, the plasma, the superheated, excited matter that is, you know, swirling around a black hole, you know, that how, how, how is it differentiated between that hydrogen? How, well, the hydrogen's not combining with it, right? So something to think about, right? Um, so, I mean, th that's what I pose. That's what I put out there because I'm tired of being the only one thinking about this. I think I've, I've expressed it to several other people, um, like only two people that probably understand what the hell I'm talking about. Most people, like my wife doesn't really have a clue what I'm talking about. She's like, oh, that's nice, honey, you pat on the head. But um, for the scientifically minded people, I would really, really love feedback and your opinions and thoughts on this. This is uh, kind of a radical concept, I guess. It's, it doesn't seem that radical to me, uh, but you know, instead of gr having gravity, and I don't, I don't want to get into the gravity side of things. I have an idea of what I believe gravity could be, potentially be, but I, I don't want to get into that. I'm just focusing on black holes. It's a hot, su it's a hot subject right now, and it's something that I, I really would like other people's opinions on um, and, and thoughts. And it's just to see how far off I am. So, yeah, this is this is this is interesting. The most massive black hole holes in the universe, the supermassive black holes, with million of times the math <laughs> mass of the sun, will have a temperature of 1.4 x 10 to the negative 14th Kelvin. That's almost absolute zero, but not quite. So only point zero six Kelvin. We're getting warmer. Yeah, so you see that. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. So please, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe down below. Give me a thumbs up. All that, all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, and even if you don't want to, and you think I'm just a crack or a kook, no big deal. But please leave me your constructive comment, uh, your your criticism, your objective point of view down below. It'd be extremely appreciated, appreciative because uh, anything that will shed more light to to this uh, is, I think, beneficial for all of, of mankind, humankind, I should say. That's the PC thing to say. So uh, much love to you all, and until next time, peace. Mm. Mm.